Hi, I'm Eddie Case and welcome to my six part framing series on how to build and frame your first basement wall. All right, we've got a lot to cover in these six videos and this is just for wall number one. All right, I want you to get this stuff right. I mean, I just finished editing this stuff here today and I put a lot of time and a lot of thought into how I was going to convey this training to you in these six videos. All right, so what I did was I took my camera down to a job and I physically framed the walls in a, in a client's basement for you, walls one, two, and three, and I show you exactly how I do it. All right, so this is really some good in-depth stuff. So if you, you know, got it in the back of your mind, hey, maybe I can't do this stuff, all right? I'm gonna get you over all those hurdles, past all those hurdles in the six-part series. When you're done with these six videos, you are definitely gonna have enough to go down into your basement, totally green, never having framed anything in your life, maybe never even have picked up a hammer. And you're gonna be able to go down into your basement and start framing like a pro. All right, so we have a lot to cover and uh, we've got six videos in which to do it. Now, in today's video, we're gonna get into the tools, the exact tools that we, me and my guys use to frame our basements. And then once you know what tools you're gonna to need, I'm gonna show you exactly how to go down there and lay out those basement walls on the floor using a chalk line. Making sure you have square, true, straight walls when the project's done. So thanks again for, uh, for subscribing to the series, and let's get on with part one, tools and layout. See you in the basement. Okay guys, we're starting a brand new job today here in Mechanicsburg, Pennsylvania. And what I wanted to do this morning was, Chris has the camera, um, we're going to be going through what you need to frame your basement. As you can see, it's a brand new job, we've got no 2x4s up yet, we've got our saw horses set up here in usual fashion with a stack of 2x4s on top, um, and we're ready to start framing here in about 15-20 minutes. But what I wanted to do is I wanted to run down all the tools that you're going to need to do your basement, all right? And there's a bunch of them. So let's go, uh, let's go down through the list here of the materials and the tools that we're going to be using to get this job done here. The one that I have my hand on here is probably the main tool for framing. This is what we use to chop all of our 2x4s to length for our, for our framing, all right? This is a power miter made by DeWalt, and uh, it's got a 10-inch blade in it, all right? This all just chops and maneuvers left and right to cut different angles on your 2 by 4 Alright, this is the main framing saw. And <laughs> next we've got a standard 7 and a quarter inch circular saw. And the name brand of these tools doesn't matter. There's a bunch of different manufacturers out there. Milwaukee, you got DeWalt, Makita, whatever. As long as it's doing what this job uh, requires it to do. Alright, so we got a 7 and a quarter inch DeWalt. Uh, circular saw, definitely going to need that. All right, um, ram set. This is our concrete fastening tool. We're using this to fasten all of our walls to the concrete floor. All right, this is made by ram set. And by the way, all this stuff you can get at Home Depot. All right, so you're going to need a ram set. This one actually has a silencer on it so that uh, it doesn't require you to wear hearing protection, which is the one we, we really like to use. That way we, uh, we don't have to wear the ear protection. All right, but you're still going to wear eye protection when you run any of these power tools. Safety glasses. Uh, we've got the two and a half inch ram set nails go inside this concrete gun. All right, you see they got the little fins on them. They're two and a half inches long. All right, that's what actually goes down through the bottom plate of your wall into the concrete. And then we've got what goes inside the ram set to fire it, which is the load. You can see they're 22 caliber. All right, that's what actually goes in the gun. If you look at one of these guys here, they they actually look like a little bullet. There's actually there's no projectile in the end. It's not a bullet. It's just a load. But it does fire the gun and drives these nails into the concrete. All right, uh, you're going going to want to have uh, some seven and a quarter inch. Uh, framing blades for your seven and a quarter inch circular saw. All right, and up this end here, we've got one more, one more saw. Uh, this is a sawzall. Now, this is a porter cable, but you can use any any type of sawzall, any manufacturer. 
Uh, it's got a wood blade in it, and we use this uh, a lot to uh, notch out our walls, maybe notch out floor joists, make odd cuts that the circular saw won't permit us to do. All right, so you're going to want to have a sawzall, or some guys might call this a reciprocating saw. All right, and then I've got my tool belt here. You're going to want to have a tool belt, uh, obviously, and uh, for framing, I have different tools in my tool belt for different parts of the job, but for framing, what I have in my belt is a, either a 25 or a 30 foot uh, standard tape measure. And you're going to want to get a good one too, don't get a cheap one. This really has a high bend point in it, it's a professional tool. This is about a $20 tape measure, but a good tape measure will last you for a long, long time. You don't want to get a cheap one. Um, I also have carpenter pencils in my belt. I'm going to be using those to draw all the lines on our 2x4s to make our cuts. Um, I've got a utility blade in here. All right, standard utility knife. Mostly using this to sharpen my pencils, believe it or not. I've also got my hammer. We're going to be using air equipment, uh, air framing guns, so you're not going to be using your hammer to like drive nails to build your walls, but you'll be using your hammer to pull nails if, you, if, you, if a nail goes in crooked, or uh, you're going to be using the claw on your hammer maybe to pry walls into position. Uh, lots of different reasons you're going to want to use a hammer. You're going to want to get a straight claw hammer. Do not get a curved claw hammer because they're about useless. As a matter of fact, if my guys even try to bring a curved claw hammer down on my job, I'll cut it in half with a saw. No, I'm just kidding. But get a, get a straight claw hammer. Guys are laughing because I actually have done that. Okay, another tool that you're definitely going to want to have in your tool belt is a speed square. All right, this is a small little carpenter square. Uh, we're using this primarily to go across our 2x4s to draw straight lines. Okay, so the speed square is really important and I pull this tool out of my belt uh, probably more than any other tool. All right, when you're framing and you're laying out all of your studs, your plates, uh, you're going to be running down all of your plates with this and making sure that all of your 2x4s are perfectly perpendicular in your wall. Um, so it's a nice layout tool. So this is a nickname of speed square or some might just call it a rafter square, which it does have markings all over it to lay out rafters. You're obviously not going to be laying out rafters in the basement for a roof, but a uh, speed square or a rafter square. All right, so there's your tool belt. Uh, also in your tool belt, I have it out on the table here, but a really important framing tool uh, is actually a plumb bob. Uh, I teach you how to use a plumb bob in the framing video series to show you how to build perfectly plumb walls, okay? Walls that are straight up and down, perfectly straight up and down, perfectly plumb. Uh, the, um, the plumb bob is a, a really important framing tool. Now a lot of guys don't like plumb bobs and won't use them. Uh, I totally de disagree with anybody that wants to frame without using one of these and I do show you how to use these in the framing series. All right, um, another important tool you're going to need is a chalk box and red chalk. Don't buy blue chalk, don't buy white chalk, black chalk, buy red chalk. It's the most visible. Uh, shows up best on the concrete floor. All right, and this is uh, going to be used to snap all the lines on the concrete floor uh, to show us where to position our walls once we build them. All right. Um, so that's a bunch of good stuff there. All right, out here on the floor I've got more stuff. There's a lot of, a lot of stuff here. Um, we've got a four foot ladder. Depending upon how high your ceilings are, these are eight foot ceilings in here. So we're going to be able to use a four foot ladder for, for everything that we're going to have to do overhead down here. Uh, if you've got nine foot ceilings or taller, you'll want to go with a six foot step ladder. But uh, four foot is probably all you'll need for most basements. Uh, we've got a sledgehammer, which we use to knock walls around. If they're not quite in position, you'll see us use uh, the sledgehammer to tap walls into position on our chalk lines. I mean, it's not necessary to have a sledgehammer, but it will come in handy if you have one. You, you may end up using that. Uh, and then next we have our levels. We've got a two foot, a four foot, and a six foot level. All right, you definitely have to have those three level sizes. 
Uh, they're going to come into play in different positions uh, in the project. There's going to be a lot of places where you're going to need a two because it's going to be tight places and then, you know, mostly going to be using the six foot level, but the four foot level also works well too. Uh, this is a framing square, right? This is a carpenter framing square. Definitely going to need this to make sure that when you start putting your lines on the floor, your chalk lines, uh, everything is 90 degree inside outside corners and you can double check everything with your framing square. So you'll need a framing square. Alright, now down here on the floor we got the major framing tool set up here. Um, like I said, we don't use hammer and nail. We don't drive stuff with hammer and nail. We use um, air equipment. I got two different styles of air guns down here. Um, again, this is a pass load and this is a Senko. You don't have to use pass load and Senko. You can use any brand that you want. As long as it's an air gun, as long as it's a framing gun, as long as it will hold a three and a quarter inch nail, which is the size nail that we use in our jobs for framing. All right. And you can see these are a uh, probably, I think these are a 20 degree. No, 30 degree. These are 30 degree nails and you can see they're angled 30 degree. They have to fit into the gun. All right. You just drop right in there like that. All right. So we're going to be using the framing guns to um, attach all of our 2x4s on our walls to the top and the bottom plate. All done with air. Obviously you'll need an air hose. You'll need a compressor to run the guns. This is called a pancake compressor. You can see the, the tank kind of resembles a pancake. Um, that's the nickname of one, pancake compressor. This is 150 psi pounds per square inch and this will run two guns at once. You can see we've got two inlets here so we can have two guys framing at one. Uh, you'll need some extension cords. And this is kind of getting into stuff that isn't super important, but um, we have uh, what's called a, uh, a three-way here. We can plug this into the wall. As you can see on the end here, we've got three uh, outlets on here. So we can run a saw, we can run a chop box, and a whatever other tool at one time coming off of one outlet. Really handy tool here. It's about a $20 item. And then contractor bags, because you're going to be making a mess, and you don't want to use regular trash bags, believe me, <laughs> with the nails and the wood chunks you're going to be bagging up. You want to get yourself uh, contractor trash bags to clean up your mess as you go along with the job. All right, I think that pretty much covers it. Um, uh, most folks have no idea how many tools you need to professionally frame a basement. And... It's not like any of these tools are luxuries. I mean, they're all really needed to get the job done right. So uh, when you start planning your project and you're not sure exactly what you're going to need, now you have an idea. So uh, good luck with your project. Uh, when you're ready to start framing, you might want to take a trip to Home Depot. Uh, maybe watch this video again and make your list and then go out there and start shopping your tools. Okay, guys, um, the very first phase of any basement remodel job uh, is actually the design, which I have in my hand here. I did it on my computer. I did it with a product called Chief Architect. Um, Chief Architect actually makes a bunch of different design programs. The one that I use, I jotted down here, it's Home Designer Suite 2012. Home Designer Suite 2012. And it kicks out great little um, drawings like this, great little designs. Um, it's a really easy program to run. Uh, I have a video out that shows you how to do it. I actually designed a basement from start to finish using this product. If you want to check that video out over at my YouTube channel at The Basement Finishing Man. Um, but anyway, once you get the design done on the computer, now what you have to do is you have to bring your design down here and you can see these are just the wall lines. This isn't a 3D rendering or anything. This is just a floor plan. Uh, you've got to bring your drawing down into the basement, your design down into the basement, and transfer these lines onto the floors of the basement. All right, and that's called the layout phase of the job. Um, and I'm actually going to do that here this morning on a job that we're starting here in Mechanicsburg and show you how I lay it out. So, based on what I have here, and I'm not going to get into how I designed this because that's for another video. 
Um, but I'm going to go around the outside right now of the basement walls, the exterior walls, with Mark here. Uh, we're going to take um, my carpenter pencil and my 25 foot tape and a chalk line. I'm going to show you how to get the exterior walls laid out, ready to build on. All right, and it's real simple. The exterior walls are the easiest walls to lay out. All you need is your tape and a carpenter's pencil, okay? You can see we've got an empty basement here. Um, uh, this is called wall wrap, okay? Uh, a lot of builders are using this now. It's uh, like an R11 R, R value. Uh, it's about an inch and a half thick. You can see I can push it in and it fluffs back out to about an inch and a half. So we have to take this into account when we start to lay out our walls, okay? So what I do, whenever there's a wall wrap, I'll come out off of my walls, off the wall, underneath, into concrete. I'll show you how I'm going to do that in a minute here. Six inches. All right, and the reason I'm coming out six inches, and the two by four wall is only three and a half, incidentally, why are you coming out six inches? Well, um, I'm coming out six inches to get away from this stuff. I don't want to be packed up against this with my framing. So what, what you do is come down into the, uh, in, in the exterior wall corner. If you have the wall wrap, just lift up the wall wrap. Okay. And expose the concrete wall behind it. Uh, if you don't have wall wrap, you're going to be coming out four and a half inches. have wall wrap. So what you want to do is put your tape measure up against the wall, right up against the concrete, not up against the wall wrap, up against the concrete. All right, make sure you're coming straight off the wall, perpendicular to the wall, and you want to make a mark at six inches. You can see down here, they're coming out to the six inch mark, and I'm going to make a little, what's called a crow's foot. Okay? Looks like a V, a crow's foot, we call it. At six inches. All right, the point of the crow's foot's right at six inches. All right. That's my first layout mark. All right, I'm going to be using the point of that crow's foot to position my chalk line to snap it from my wall position. All right, so whenever we do it one side of any wall, we have to do the exact same thing on the other side. So on this wall right here, we're going to come down to the other side of it. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to lift up the wall wrap. We're going to put our tape right up against the concrete. All right, we're coming straight off the wall. And at six inches, I'm going to make a crow's foot. All right. And I always circle mine, so they're easy to find later. So I'm going to go around and lay out the whole basement first, and we're going to come back and snap the lines later. All right. Okay, so that wall's laid out. All right, I haven't snapped the line yet, but with those two six inch crow's foot marks in place, this wall is officially laid out. That's going to dictate where I'm going to build my wall and position my wall. All right, let's do one more here because basically I'm going to be doing the same thing the whole way around the basement on the exterior walls. So we'll just come up to this wall here. Now you can see this wall here runs down to the furnace. All right, the furnace is actually going to be uh, positioned in an unfinished closet. So I just have to get somewhere close to this furnace and make my, my, my next six inch mark. All right, so down here, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to lift up the wall wrap, expose the concrete, and you don't, you know, somewhere close to the corner, maybe, maybe uh, a foot, six inches out of the corner, all right, for these marks. Up against the concrete, make our crow's foot. All right, go up here by the furnace, somewhere close to the furnace, you know, a foot, 16 inches away, close enough. Up the wall wrap, come straight off the concrete wall and make a crow's foot. Okay. That wall's laid out. Now what I'm going to do here is we're going to take a, a chalk line here 
and I'm going to snap these two wall lines for you to show you where we're going to position the wall. And this is real simple. It takes two people to snap lines. We got our red chalk on our chalk box. The mark's going to go up to that crow's foot up that end. I'm going to put it right on the point of the crow's foot. And down here, I'm going to go right across the point. Then you got the point of the crow's foot. You want to go right through the point. All right. And then grab a hold of your chalk line and lift straight up. Don't go sideways. You want to lift straight up towards the ceiling and let go. All right. And there you have a perfectly straight six inch line, six inches away from the concrete where we're going to position our two by four wall when we build it. We're going to set on the wall side of all these lines. All right. And what we do in the business when we're framing is we'll make an X on the side of the line where we want to position the wall. Okay, if I want to put it on this side, I X this side. If I was sitting the wall over here, I'd put the X out here. All right, well, when you're doing your exterior walls, you're always going to put the X on the wall side of the line. So, you know, you can put them in a couple different places so you don't forget. We obviously know where they're going to be going. We've been doing this for years. You may not. So. As you go, mark your mark your X's. Okay, and then we're gonna mark the second wall. And this is actually where the walls are gonna be sitting. This is they're gonna be sitting right on these lines. Alright. I'm gonna snap that. We're both cross our crow's foot, lift straight up, let go. There's our second line. Now, I'm going to do something now with my framing square. All right. This is a framing square. Here. A framing square is a device we use to make sure that our corners, inside and outside corners, are perfectly square. Perfect 90 degree angles. We want that on the inside and outside corners on all of our walls that we're laying out. So I'm going to take my square, and I'm just going to check, check this red line here in the corner here, and make sure that this right here is a 90 degree angle, because that's what we want in our inside corner. So it should be close. I mean, if you're close, you're going to be good enough, okay? If it's wildly off, then we're going to want to adjust it. But I'm going to sit my, my square down here, I'm going to put... And it doesn't matter if I put it this way or if I put it this way. We're just checking the outside of our square here to make sure that our red lines are 90. So we're going to place our square on the red lines. If you look down the square here and down the side over here, you can see that we're, we're on the red line. All right, we're a tiny, tiny bit off over here on this end. I mean, I'm not... We're talking maybe a sixteenth of an inch, all right? If you're that close, you're good, all right? And again, we're just double checking to make sure that our inside and outside corners aren't drastically off. It's never going to be perfect, all right? You'll drive yourself nuts if you try to get it perfect. If you're close, you're good enough. And trust me on that. I've been doing this for almost 30 years. All right, so... <coughs> Now what happens here? We, we've hit our first obstacle in our layout. We've got a furnace here. Um, we're going to put our furnace in a closet. All right? We're also going to be adding a water heater to this layout. Uh, we're going to be putting a water heater probably right around in this area right here. All right? That's going to be a water heater. When our plumber comes next week, he's going he's to put a new water heater here. So what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to put our water heater in that closet with the furnace. So we'll draw our water heater on the floor here roughly to size. All right. Now we're going to be using our framing square again to determine where we're going to build the wall around this. So everything's a 90 degree angle. Now you can do angled walls, but I'm not going to get into that in this video series at all. Um, everything's going to be 90 degree inside and outside corners. So we want to miss our water heater. All right, we're going to want a wall coming off this red line this way, 
coming out and then going back, putting that furnace in an unfinished closet. So I'm going to put my square on the red line. And we're making a 90 degree bend here off of this red line, off of that wall line. And I'm just going to draw, draw a 90 degree line coming off of my outside wall line. Something like this. Okay, and I'm going to want to set it on this side of the line. So it's coming right down beside my water heater. All right. Now, a framing square is only two foot long at its longest point. This line's got to be longer than that. So what, once we get our 90 degree turn using our framing square, we can extend this line using a level. So what we're going to do is we're going to bring our four foot level down here. And this is just one of the other uses you can use your levels for. Levels are nice and straight. They use them to draw straight lines. We're going to extend that line out here. Go about here somewhere. Okay. Far enough that we're out past the furnace here. All right. And then what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to turn this wall right here and send it back right down here in front of this furnace. Right down to this wall. Okay. So that all this stuff here is in an unfinished it really depends how much room you want inside your unfinished closet where you're going to position this next wall. Uh, we've got a gas manifold down here on the wall. I'm going to want to keep that in this closet too. All right, This is considered to be utility here and I want to keep it in here with this furnace. So I'm going to build my wall over here and send it back down to that wall that we just did there with the square. All right, so. We've got to come out that far. And I'm just going to get a rough measure in here. About five feet. And this is not an exact science. Basement framing is more of an art of framing. I'm not using a blueprint with numbers on it. Okay? I'm not following dimensions on any plan. I'm creating as I go. And this is how I frame all my basements. All right, so I'm going to come out here five feet, make a crow's foot. Okay. And before I snap this line back over here in front of the furnace, I'm going to lay out that wall over there so that I can come 90 degree off of this wall. All right. Six inches. Again, I'm up against the concrete. And I should recap on the fact that if you don't have this wall wrap, you're going to be coming four and a half inches off your concrete or your block walls. The only reason we're coming out six is to get away from this wall wrap. The, the regular measurement is four and a half. I'll make a mark there. Down here. And then me and Mark will snap that line. Right across our crow's foot, snap that. Okay. Okay, now if that mark that I made here, the crow's foot that I made there to get me out past this gas manifold, I'm gonna take my framing square again. I'm gonna put it down here on the red line. and draw my perpendicular line. Okay, what that did was that made a 90 degree bend here in our framing. All right, I'm gonna set on this side of the line. Now, I'm gonna take this line down and connect it to that one that we brought around over here. All right, I'm gonna come out and down this way. Keeping in mind, the whole time I'm doing this, I want nice, crisp, 90-degree corners. Inside 90-degree corners, and when I come down around right here, this is going to be an outside 90-degree corner. It doesn't matter. Inside or outside, they have to be 90 degrees. So, 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to have Mark hold me on right here in the corner at the crow's foot. And I'm going to snap my red line down that pencil line that I just made using my carpenter square. All right. And so to do that, if you look down there where Mark is, watch, what, watch how my chalk line comes over to the pencil line right about there on that corner. You can see I don't want to be here. I'm not on my pencil line. I don't want to be out here. I want to be right on that pencil line, right there. Does that look good, Mark? Yep. All right, and then what I want to do is snap that line. Okay. And I'll just take my, my level here again, and I'll extend this line over till I hit my chalk line. Okay, and what we're going to do is we're going to check this outside corner and see if we're close. We should be close. Right. And we're going to put our outside of our square on the red line and this pencil line and check to see if we got a 90 degree outside corner. Okay, you can see our red line's coming right down our framing square and right around the corner. Now I'm off a little, little tiny bit again right here, but it's not enough to worry about. This is still close enough to being a 90 degree bend here. All right, so this, this right here, 90 degrees, okay? That's an outside 90 degree corner. All right, this down here, This is a 90 degree inside corner. Okay? 90 degrees. All right, so this is a rocket science, obviously. Um, so now you know how to take your layouts off your exterior walls. If you got the wrap, it's six inches off the concrete or block. If you don't have the wrap, it's four and a half. Uh, we're going to be sitting our 2x4 walls right on these red lines, all right? Right on these red lines. We're making the lines on the floor where our walls are actually going to sit. We're marking where our walls are going to sit on the lines with X's, okay? Always going to put our wall on the side of the line with the X's. The exterior walls, we always put the X on the wall side of the line. Okay, so just that quick, we've laid out one, two, three, four, five walls. Double check them for 90 degree inside and outside corners. And if I had guys over here right now at this pile of two by fours at this saw, they could start cutting these two by fours up and build the walls to sit on those lines. And they're ready to go. All right, so what I'm gonna do with Mark and Chris, the cameraman, we're gonna go around and we're going to do the exact same thing to the rest of our, our project walls. Now, I don't know the shape of your basement, the layout of your job, um, every job's different. But the principles of the layout work that I just showed you will apply exactly the same to your job. Now once I get all the lines on the floor here, and I'm not gonna film this because it's just more of the same stuff, I'm gonna turn the camera back on and before I build my walls, I'm gonna show you how to transfer <coughs> all of these wall lines that are on the floor up overhead. Okay, and we're going to be using uh, a plumb bob and a level to do that. I'm going to show you how to do that too because every line that we put on the floor, we've got to put up overhead too. And I'll show you why and how we're going to do that a little bit.